Hey guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to look at a lesson on finding slope from two points. So from now on, they're going to take those graphs and grid lines away from us. So we got to have a method to um, find the slope from just the two points. So this would be an example of that, where they give us two points, but it would be in a table. And even though this one says it's the rate of change, it's still the slope, all right? Because the constant rate of change is the slope. So on this first one, number one, from 3 to negative 4, that's our rise because it's the change in y's. That's going from 3 to negative 4, that's down. 3, and then you'll just count down to negative 4, that shows down 7, which makes the rise a negative 7 because it went in the downward direction. For the x's, this goes from negative 2 to 5, that's going to go up, I'm sorry, that's going to go to the right. And again, if we're counting, that would be 7. So that's negative 7 over 7, which is negative 1. In table 2, it's the same idea. We're going from 4 to 9, which would be up 5. So that gives us a rise. That's a positive 5. And the run, the change in the x's, that goes to the right 1. So that gives us a run of positive 1, and 5 divided by 1 is 5. Finally, we got this other table, and this is what I would expect it to look like on a quiz. Something with three or more points, so that you get to choose which two points you want to use to figure out the rate of change. I am going to use these two endpoints right here. And if I do that, I see from 0 to 14 in the y's, that means I'm going to have to go up 14, so the rise is positive 14. And the run, this is going from 0 to 2, which is to the right, 2. So that would be uh, positive 14 over positive 2, which simplifies to 7. Now we can demonstrate this with the next set. For example, if we went from 0 to 7, that would show up 7. And from 0 to 1 would be to the right, 1. Well, a positive 7 over a positive 1 is still 7. And that would work the same if we had gone up 7 from 7 to 14, and then to the right 1 from 1 to 2. It's going to be the same value no matter what, because these are linear tables, and so the rate of change is constant, and so the slope is the same no matter what. As long as we simplify it, we'll always end up with the same values on these. Calculate the slope of the following graphs. Okay, there's lots of graphs to find the slope from. So on this one, we have the M, which is rise over run still. And it's nice for them to give us the grids because very soon they will take those away. So also they gave us two points, which again is very generous. So when I look at these two points, just like we did on the last one, we can make a right triangle like this. And from here, we can find the rise over run. So for me, this one's going to go down <coughs> and to the right. And how far down are we going to go? Starting from this point. So that'd be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we went down 6. So as a rise, that would be negative 6. And then the run to the right, starting at this point here, we're going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3. So that would be a positive 3. From here, all we need to do is simplify the fraction to find the slope. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So this would be the slope. Take one minute and try number two with your neighbor, and we want to find the slope of this line. So on this one, once again, we're going to make that triangle like this. I did see some of you guys make the triangle like this as well, and that would be fine, because you're going to get the same answer either way. You just got to remember which one is rise and which one is run. So for this one, I can see I'm going to go up and to the right. So how far up specifically? Starting here, that'd be zero, one. 2, so we went up 2, the rise is up 2, <clears throat> and then the run is to the right starting from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's to the right 8, that's positive 8, and 2 divided by 8 would give us 1 fourth as the slope. Now this one doesn't give us the line. But it does give us the two points there at the top. 
Take a minute with your neighbor, graph those, and then find the slope. All right, let's do this one. So we've got this point at 4, 3. Now remember, it's always in alphabetical order, so the 4 is the x value, and the 3 is the y value. So on the x-axis, I would find 4, and the y value is 3, so I'm going to go up 3. So this would be where the point is, 4, 3. Right there. And then the other point is at 0, 1, so the x has 0 value, so it's on the y-axis somewhere. So starting here at 0, would go up 1, bam, there's our next point. From here, we actually don't need to draw a huge line, just something to connect these values together. Well, maybe something a little bit better than that. That's okay. Because we're still going to use these two points to draw our triangle. So I'm going to draw something like this one, right here. Now we're still looking at rise over run for this. So we've got to figure out the rise, and this one goes up. How far up does it go? Two. So rise is, for now, it's up two. And then the run to the right. So it goes to the right four, which would be a positive four there. And positive two divided by positive four would simplify to one half. So there's our slope after we created a graph like it asked us to. All right, take a minute and try this one with your neighbor. All right, here we go on this one. So we got to graph the point 1, 4 first. So I'm looking for x value that's 1 and the y value that's 4. So that would be this point right here. Next up, we have a point at negative 2, 6. So that would be this point right here. Let's go ahead and connect these. All right, now we don't really need to go, again, past those because it's not going to matter because we're going to connect these and make a triangle. Now, again, it wouldn't matter where you drew your triangle. It should uh, eventually give us the same rise and run. So for this one, it looks like it's going down and to the right. How far down is this one going? Uh, it's going down two. Two. There you go. Because we're starting here, we're going down one, two. So the rise, since it's a down two, would be negative two. And then the run, which goes to the right, how far? Three. Very good. So it goes to the right three, that's a positive three. That means the final slope would be negative two thirds. So on this one, yeah, if you did that, you'd go up two, but in this case, you're going to the left three. So that becomes a positive two over negative three, like this. But it still has the same value with just the one negative. Again, we can show uh, the way we did in purple, the negatives in the numerator with the rise. In the green, it's with the run in the denominator. All right, take a minute with your neighbor and try this one. Find the rise and run and slope of each line shown below. You have to think of a way to use the coordinate points to find the rise and run. So um, it's a little different because they took the grid lines away from us, which we expected. Take a minute with your neighbor and solve this one. So let's just kind of look at the basics on how to do this. And we've seen this before, especially in one of the quizzes when we found the equation for it. So here's, here's what's happening. We're going from this A value. I'm going to say I'm going to go up to the B value. So I've got to find the distance between these two Y values first, and that would be the rise on this one once I figure this out. Well, the A value, its Y value is 1, and the B value, its Y value is 3. So I can see on this one I'm going up. But how far up am I going? I'm going from 1 to 3, so I mean we could just simply count that, right? So from 1 to 3, we went up 2, so that's a rise of 2. Next up, we're looking at the x values for the a, which is starting at 1, and we're going to b, which also is at 3. So on this one, we're going to the right, and this one, of course, wasn't drawn to scale. So we're going to the right from 1 to 3, and again, that would be to the right 2. So the run is 2, and the slope would be 2 over 2, 
which divided is 1. So we're going to do the same thing on number 6, but we're going to do it a little differently, just in case it helps. All right. So there's a few different methods we can use. So let's say that we didn't like that method because most people don't for some reason. Then you could still draw a triangle. And you're still figuring out the rise, in this case up, and the run to the right. So up is the rise. How far up is this? Well, we're going from, again, this is the 2 to 8. So how far is that? Uh, 6. 6, yeah. So we're going to have to go up 6. Let's show that. So if you take the 8 and subtract the 2, you get 6. That is how you find distance between values because it's the difference between them, okay? And that's why difference is subtraction is because we're finding the distance between these. So 8 minus 2 is 6. And in the x values, we're going to the right from 1 to 4. That would be to the right 3 because we can do 4 minus 1, which is 3. So the run is 3. Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Actually, pretty much from now on, we'll be using that subtraction stuff. And we'll see, we'll see it come up in a formula very soon. So take a minute and try number 7 with your neighbor. Find the rise and run and slope. All right, here we go on this one. Again, we shouldn't need grid lines. On this one, in fact, we shouldn't need a graph anymore as long as they give us the two points. The rise, I'm going to take the y values, which are 2 and negative 1. And I'm going to find the distance between them by subtracting. Now that's minus the negative, which is going to make that plus 1, which would make that 3. So in the slope, I have 3 over the run, which I'm going to take this 2 and subtract the 1 which is the difference between those two values, 2 minus 1, which is 1. And 3 divided by 1 is 3. All right, you guys get started on this one. All right, here we go on this one. Again, if you're drawing the triangle or however you're doing it, it's still okay. In any case, to find uh, the distance for up and to the right on this one, again, we're going to use subtraction. So I'm looking again at the y values for the rise. I'm going to take the 6 and subtract the 2, the other y value, and that will tell me the rise, which is 4. The run, I'm going to take 1 and subtract this negative 3. And when I subtract a negative, I end up adding, which would make 1 minus negative 3, positive 4 right there. So for the slope, I've got... A rise of 4 and a run of 4, which simplifies to 1. All right, let's look at 9 as well. So on this one, again, I'm looking at the rise, so I'm looking at the y value specifically, because the y values are up and down. And this one is going from 3 to negative 2, so the distance will be subtraction. 3 minus negative 2 would be the same as 3 plus 2, which is 5. The run is the x value, so I'm going from 0 to 4. So I've got 0 and 4, which I will subtract, and that gives me negative 4. So the slope on this one, 5 over negative 4. Now on this one, we'll do the same thing with the y values. I've got a negative 1 y value and a negative 4 y value here. And we're going to subtract these, right? So that gives me a rise of negative 1 minus negative 4, which is negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And then the run is from negative 3 to negative 3, which when I subtract these together, I get 0. Well, that means the slope is 3 over 0. And how many zeros go into 3? An infinite number of them. So this one would be undefined slope. Now we can see that it's undefined visually because 
There is no steeper line than this one. It's the steepest. In fact, it's so steep that we can't even quantify the slope because it's so steep, straight up and down. Um, all right, the rise on this one, we're looking at the y values, 3 and 3. So 3 and 3, which again we subtract, and that gives us 0. The y values, I'm looking at negative 6 and 1, which again we subtract, and that gives us negative 7, right there. You may have gotten a positive 7 also, so the slope is 0 divided by negative 7. Now how many negative 7's go into 0? That would be 0. So the slope on this one is 0. What that means is that it has no steepness. Because it's, like if, if you were to try to walk that, it would be the easiest one to walk because it has no steepness. All right, same thing on number 12. Again, we'll look at the y values for the run. 2 and 0. And we'll subtract these to get 2. The run is with the y values, 2 and negative 4. But we do need to subtract these. 2 minus negative 4 is the same as 2 plus 4, which is 6. So 2 divided by 6 simplifies to 1 third. All right, guys, let's look at this. So again, if you're creating the triangles, it's not a big deal on this one. There we go. And in any case, we can see it's up and to the right. So we know the slope should be positive. The question is, how far up does it go and then how far to the right? So how do we know that it goes up 6? Very good. So on this one, we'll do negative 2 minus the negative 8, which would be the same as negative 2 plus 8, which is 6. And then how far to the right would this one go? I didn't hear what that was. Just to get to the y-axis would be to the right, right 10, 10, but then, then there's, there's another 10 just to get to the point. point. So that, so that would, would be a run of 20. 20. And again, and again we, we can show, show this with, with 10, 10 minus the other, other x value, value negative, negative 10. 10. So that, so that would, would be 20. 20. And, and 6 divided, divided by 20, 20 this, this will simplify, simplify to... Oh, it's, oh, it's close. close. 3 tenths. Ten. And then that one. It's coming. All right, graphing points can be time-consuming. Develop a procedure for calculating the slope without graphing each point because eventually they will not give us any graph at all. Explain your procedure below. Show that it works for problems 1 through 4 above. Discuss and compare your method for calculating slope without using right triangles on a graph with your neighbor. Okay, Take a minute and do that. All right, so we subtract the y values to find the distance between the y values, which is giving us the rise. And then when we subtract the x values, that's the distance between the x values, which is the run. At least that's what we've been doing there in the past. You could still say that you're drawing triangles and then finding the distance, uh, but generally you're using subtraction anyways. So that brings us to this formula. What does it mean and how does it work? Take a minute with your neighbor and see if you can write a sentence on this one. One full sentence. So once again, we've seen that the rise is found by finding the difference in the y values and the run is found by finding the difference in the x values. It's the same thing that we've been doing. Now what this means is we could have been using this formula for all of the previous problems. Uh, it's going to want us to use it in the empty boxes on the future problems for this. All right, so on this one, uh, we'll do 18 together, then we'll give you guys a couple minutes to do 19 and 20. So we'll fill in the missing box with that slope formula stuff. So just to guess, get us started on that, we know it's subtraction between the values. And on this one, we're going to take the y values. I've got negative 6 and 0. And for the x values, I've got negative 3 and 6. So when I subtract those, that gives me that uh, bottom box. 
the, that's a delta y, which is change in y. The change in y is negative 6, and the change in the x's is negative 3 minus 6, which is negative 9. So this would simplify to 2 thirds as the slope. Last thing we need to do on this one, because it did not give us a graph, is to graph it. So I've got a point at 6, 0, which is right here. And then another point at negative 3 and negative 6, right there. Last thing we've got to do is draw a line through those points. And something like this would do. All right, now that we've seen that, so that, that's what we want in that empty box there, is that formula for slope. Take a minute with your neighbor and do 19 and 20. So on this one, I'll do the graph first, and then we'll do the slope for this one. So we'll start with 4, negative 3. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 3. So that should be this point, 4, negative 3. And then we've got negative 5 and 9, which, I don't know, it'd be up here somewhere. Now that's off the grid for us, but that's okay. We can still graph this. And there's our graph, approximately. So now that we have the graph, let's find the slope. So once again, we know the formula is going to divide the rise and run and subtracting the x and y values. So the y values are first, and the y values in this one are negative 3 and 9, and the x values are 4 and negative 5. So to find the change in y divide and divide it by the change in x, I've got negative 3 divided by, I'm sorry, minus 9 which is negative 12. And 4 minus negative 5 is 4 plus 5. That's a positive 9. So this simplifies to a negative 4 thirds. 20 is nice because it gives us a graph. And on this one, um, we just need to figure out the values of these points. So I'm going to look at this one first, which is at negative 4 for the x and the y would be negative 2, because it's down 2 from there. And then this point here appears to be at an x value of 2 and a y value of 1. Now that we have these, once again, we can find the slope just using the formula. So for the y values, we've got a negative 2 and a 1. And for the x values, we've got negative 4 and 2. So negative 2 minus 1 would be negative 3, and negative 4 minus 2 would be negative 6. Um, and that would simplify to 1 half. Now just so we're aware, if I took those values from this point and put them here and switched them, the only difference is the 3 would be positive and the 6 would be positive, but it would still simplify to a positive 1 half. Again, that's because the rate of change is the same. Just sometimes we've got to work with the signs on that stuff. Take a minute with your neighbor and do these four. Actually, I'll give you guys a few minutes to do this one. But work with your neighbor. All right, I'm actually going to focus on 24 to start with on this one. Then we'll show you the answers to the other ones so that you guys can check your work. But on this one, here, here's the only information it gives us, is that we have this point at negative 1, negative 7, which is right here. Okay. The other piece of information is that the slope is 5. So even if we looked at the formula for this one, we have a y value in that point that was given at negative 7, and then an x value that was given at negative 1. Well, here's what we know then, because... The slope is 5. Whatever we do with these values, we need to get 5 over 1, or some fraction that equates to it, like 10 over 2. So you could fill in the values by solving the equations, but the other classes didn't like that very much. So I'm going to skip that part. Here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to look at the slope as 5 over 1, which means that from this point I have a rise of 5, and then a run of 1, which would give us this point. From there, I still have a rise of 5, and then a run of 1. And well, I guess that's all the points I can fit on this one. So that gives me this line, or something like it. 
And I just need to fill in the points that we found. So we found um, 0, negative 2. Or you could have used 1, 3. Which, uh, if we filled into the table, for example, 1, 3, right there, it would give us negative 10 over negative 2, which simplifies to 5 over 1. But if you plugged in the values from the other point at negative 2, 0, this one would give us negative 5 over negative 1, which still equals 5 in the end on that, okay? So it wouldn't matter which of these two points you fill into the formula, it still works. Uh, yeah, do these four, and then do the next four as well, all right, with your neighbor. All right, guys, there's the answers for 25 through 28. All right, finish up on these four as well. So on number 31, all they give us is a slope, which means all you need to do is draw a line with the slope of three halves and then find your points to put into the formula, all right? So we'll still use the formula on this. We just got to figure out what points we're going to use. Let's use the origin. All right, the origin sounds like a good start. Woo! Okay. Now, from the slope, it says we're going to go up three and then to the right two. So I'm going to go up three and to the right two. That gives me my next point. And I can continue this pattern up three to the right two. Kind of like with the stair steps. But just like with the stair steps, we can continue this pattern also to the left with an up three to the right two stair step, okay? So this would be my next point. Three and two again would be this next point. So we can connect these now. And that would be the line. Now would it matter though if you took this line and moved it over here? No, it wouldn't, okay? You're just using different points in the formula. But with the ones that we have, that's okay. And we did start with the origin on this one, which is at zero, zero. And then we can use any of these points. I'm going to use this one right here at 2, 3. So I have a y value of 0 and an x value of 0, and then a y value of 3 and an x value of 2. This would give us negative 3 over negative 2, which would simplify to 3 over 2. Now let me show that on this one. So that's negative 3, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. The two negatives with the division become a positive oh. three halves on that. 32 is much like uh, the last one that we did with, where it gave us a point in the slope. So we're going to start at 0, negative 2, which is right here. And then this one shows down 3 and to the right 4 in the slope. So I'm going to go down 3 and to the right 4, which is that stair step. But we can duplicate it over here as well. So we get these points, and from there we can draw the line. And in, again, in the formula, it doesn't matter which two points we use. I can use uh, 4, negative 5. So in the formula, this should work also. I've got a y value of negative 2 and negative 5. And then x values of 0 and 4. So that'll be plus right there. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Now again, it's showing a negative in a different place, but this is still the same as that 
slope that it gave us there. All right, thanks for watching. I hope uh, this was helpful for you guys. If it was, just like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. And we'll see you guys in the next lesson.